Good afternoon, Slave family. It is another fabulous Tuesday, and we have a treat for you today. You know, we are all about empowering women here, but we have a special group today. We are actually have two women, hopefully a third one joining us shortly, and they are about empowering young women. And if we can make a difference in the lives of young women, then we've got a whole nother game that we get to play. And that's something very exciting. So today we are joined by the Baltimore Leadership School for Young Women. And this is one really exciting venture and organization. And here we have her. Great. So what we're going to do to start off, I'd like to meet, have you meet each one of our guests. And then we are going to jump in and let you hear a little bit about this organization, what it does. And if you're not in Baltimore, how there are sister type organizations around the country. So to kick us off today, let's see. Um, I see Siobhan is getting tuned in. We'll get her audio on. Um, and I will start off while you get set up with Christina. So uh, Christina Easton, if you could take a minute and introduce yourself, that would be a great place to start. Sure, happy to. Hi, everyone. My name is Christina Easton. I am a proud, I will say this because it's a Baltimore group um, here and I just have to, but I am a proud and rare product of 18 years of single sex education. I went to the Bryn Mawr School for Girls here in Baltimore growing up um, K through 12 and then somehow got strong armed into going to a women's college and was never looked back, have no regrets. Um, and I was a special education teacher in New York City when I had the opportunity to join um, the founding group of a girls school there and spent some time there and came home to Baltimore to serve as the upper school principal at Baltimore Leadership School for Young Women from school year 1617 until 1920. Um, from there, I transitioned into a consultant role with my company, Impact Educational Consulting. We focus on supporting education initiatives that focus particularly on equity and access for um, and quality of education for urban girls and girls of color. Um, and that founding of that company really came from my experience working in schools like Bliss, um, which is uh, the acronym that we use for Baltimore Leadership School for Young Women, since that is a mouthful um, and it's blissful. But um, so, so I have been working with the school in this capacity on their whole girl wellness initiative. And I'm happy to join to talk about where the school is and where the school's going. Excellent, well, thank you so much for being here. Um, uh, Carrie, we're going to have you introduce yourself next, and then Siobhan, if you'll be able to unmute, we'll take on you to kick it all off today, okay? Okay, Carrie, take it away. Great. Thanks so much for having us, Leanne. Uh, my name is Carrie Stickle. I'm the Director of Development of Bliss, and my bad joke is the YW are silent, so thank you, for Chris Christina, for reminding us, because I always forget that people don't necessarily hear Bliss when they see our acronym. Um, I have worked in development for almost 20 years, and all of that has been in education. Education has been really important to me, and uh, I've been at Bliss now for just under two years. Um, this is my second foray into all girls education, which I find to be really exciting uh, and purposeful. So I'm really excited to be at Bliss. I'm thrilled that we're back in session with girls in person this year after some particularly hard COVID restrictions and being in virtual learning. And it's, it's, a, it's been a, an exciting and interesting school year. Um, and so, it, yeah, I even have girls popping into the office at this time of the day. So if you see me looking over this way, that's why. <laughs> that's quite all right. Thank you so much. And then last but by no means least, we have the queen bee here, uh, Siob Siobhan Hall-Smith. If you would do me a favor, Siobhan, maybe take a second, introduce yourself and then let everybody know a little bit about the inspiration and founding of the school. Hey, so good afternoon, everyone. I am Siobhan Hall-Smith, and I have the honor and the privilege to serve as a chief executive officer for the Baltimore Leadership School for Young Women. So I say chief executive officer. The girls just say, you know, she's the one that sits in the office and tells us about our uniforms and all of the things. So I am originally from uh, Brooklyn, New York, and came to Baltimore uh, through work with the uh, Baltimore City Public Schools as part of a grant uh, from the Michael and Susan Dale Foundation to research and study school effectiveness. Uh, during that work, I actually uh, came to the Baltimore Leadership School to do a charter renewal visit. And as part of that visit, we were not supposed to tell schools 
uh, you know, what to do. We were only there to gather data and share that data with the district office. A uh, short version of a much longer story. I did not listen that time, mm -hmm. gave recommendations. And then a year later, uh, the school was looking for its next principal. The staff in the office said, you know, you had so much to say about the school last year. Why don't you apply? Uh, I did. I did not think that I would get the job. And the dare was that they would buy me Chick-fil-A if I went on the interview. So I got Chick-fil-A and I also got a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to serve uh, wonderful young women in Baltimore City. Uh, similar to Christina, I did not, I am not a lifer in all girls schools, but I did attend Spelman College in Atlanta, Georgia. So that was an amazing experience and um, really shaped how I think about education, particularly the education of black and brown women. So uh, I think the next part of that question is to talk about the inspiration of the founding of, of Bliss. So our school was actually founded in 2008, taking in our first class in 2009. The school was founded by Brenda Brown Weaver, who is a philanthropist here in Baltimore City, and I, I can even venture to say and beyond. Mm -hmm. And her work has always focused on improving the lives of women. Uh, so she started with an organization known as HANA, and that organization primarily served, served excuse me, women in uh, the Jewish community. And from there, uh, her daughter, Amanda Lippitz, shared uh, information about a school in New York uh, called the Young Women's Leadership Network. And that school, uh, the head or the flagship school, excuse me, was in Harlem. She told her mom about the school and said that, you know, we really need that type of school in Baltimore. And as they say, the rest is history. So the school started, opened in 2009 with a class of sixth graders. And in 2016, those wonderful, cute little sixth grade girls were now young women on their way to college. And then we fast forward uh, a few years later, those cute little girls uh, that were introduced to the school in 2009, many of them are now college graduates who are forging their own path in their respective cities, although we wish many of them would come back to Baltimore, so that's my shameless plug. Um, oh, they are doing really wonderful <laughs> things around the country. Uh, so when we think about the inspiration for our school, um, it, it's, it's simple but impactful. We want to make sure that we are transforming Baltimore, and the way that we see that we can do that is through the lives of young women and promoting leadership in addition to a college preparatory education. Phenomenal. Can you uh, maybe share a little bit about, you know, how the philosophy has impacted some young women, maybe a success story that you have about that's come through the school? Uh, we have quite a few, so it is hard to uh, pinpoint. <laughs> just sure one. it's hard to pick, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I think right now, uh, and only because I recently received a, a text from her. So if you hear things buzzing, it's it's the um, the girls and they're asking questions about different things. But one story that I particularly think about is of a student uh, alumni now. She Her name is Tamara and Tamara graduated in 2018. Yay. And when Tamara came to Bliss, uh, Christina, neither Christina, me or Carrie were at the school when she came as a sixth grader. And I believe we met her in 10th and 11th grade respectively. And uh, at the time when I met Tamara, she was um, she was frustrated. I wouldn't say angry, but very frustrated with uh, just the circumstances that life had dealt her way. Uh, she was encouraged to become more involved in school and she did just that. She always thrived in math and in science. So we found ways to, to support her in making sure that she felt more confident in what she was doing. Uh, so we fast forward to her graduation and she received a full scholarship to Philander Smith uh, University in Little Rock, Arkansas. And um, when we think about the impact that the school has had on her, I, let me change that. The impact Tamara has had on our lives more so than anything else. Oh. Tamara is now, um, she's graduating in a few weeks uh, with her bachelor's degree and she is going to become a math teacher. So she majored, she had a double major in math and in education and she did wonderful, wonderful work with a national organization known as the Breakthrough Collaborative and she taught. And unfortunately we lost her to Houston Public Schools. Oh. <laughs> so she is going to be an amazing math teacher um, but in Houston Public Schools and we are excited about the work that she is going to do 
because we not often do we hear of black and brown women not only enjoying math, but enjoying it to the point where they can teach it to others. So um, she is a success story for me because she has had to overcome many, many obstacles. Mm -hmm. um, and some of those obstacles included lo losing or family members transitioning. And uh, right now we are as a, you know, a school community planning to figure out how we can go to surprise her. So I hope Tamara doesn't see this until after graduation. Um, how are we going to surprise her and show up at graduation? Oh, that's so, um, we'll, yes. We'll so hide this video yeah. inside the Facebook group for a little bit. How's that? <laughs> yeah. But we are so excited. She, um, whenever she is back in town, she always comes to speak to our students. She has spoken to uh, donors, to our board, because she is more so than any of us on this call, the best ambassador of our work. She yeah. is our mission actualized. So if we, we had to say like, what is our mission and why do we do the work that we do? Tamara is just one living example of why this work is so important. Um, I just wanna to add to that story, you know, Siobhan, you've done such a beautiful job telling her story as an individual um, and to tying it back to even the founding of the school. Um, one of the things that makes Bliss unique, uh, particularly in the Baltimore landscape, which is rich with um, single sex schools, but not many uh, public schools, right? Is that too often young women in urban areas don't get exposed to teachers through their educational experience that look like them, that inspire them, that can identify with them in their life experiences. And oftentimes that has a much greater uh, impact on their educational experience than one might assume. And so the fact that we have produced a future Black woman math teacher, um, regardless of the fact that she will be in Houston, I, am, I just got a chill and have goosebumps on my arm because it also means that we're not only achieving our mission for our individual students, but on a systemic level. Yes, that's really incredible. And, and there are people who are clearly watching this that are in the Baltimore area, but this is a model that you have picked up and applied here. And there are other schools like this around the country as well. Um, yes. If somebody's right. watching this and they're you know, in another part of the country, how would they find a school like this or know if there is one in their marketplace? Mm -hmm. So I can speak to that a bit. Um, I actually used to work at one of our affiliates when I was in New York at the Brooklyn School. Um, the, as Siobhan mentioned in her introduction of the, the founding of the school, the, we are an affiliate of the Young Women's Leadership Network or the Student Leadership Network um, and the Young Women's Leadership Schools. They have affiliates um, all across the country, notably five in New York City, which are their core schools, um, us in Baltimore on the East Coast. You can find another in in, um, North Carolina and Wilmington. They have a, an additional network of schools in Texas, in multiple cities in Texas. Um, and oof, I, I, the list goes on. Um, St. Louis. North Carolina. I, Los Angeles. They're, they're Rochester, all New York. Rochester, yes. And so mm -hmm. if you're looking to support this initiative of single sex education in public schools, they're a wonderful place to start. They're not the only ones, but they are certainly a wonderful place to start. Um, and you could just look up Student Leadership Network and they will have a page of their affiliate schools and you can find mm -hmm. out if there's one near you. They also um, have lots of opportunities to get involved and volunteer. Outstanding. Now you have, um, clearly you're having not only an impact here, but a ripple effect, as you said, now we've got, you know, Texas going on, et cetera. What would you love to see in the next five to 10 years as you continue your mission with the school? What, what are the goals? What's the dream, so to speak? So I think if you ask uh, each of us, we would each have a different answer, but my- That's good, let's hear it. I don't know we're looking at each other through the screen. Yeah, right. Gonna go all that. We can do all three, that's all good, let's hear it. <laughs> uh, so I would say for my, my dream for the school is not, for, not only for the, stu the school to continue to do this very impactful and intentional work in Baltimore City, but for the city to also see how the school is contributing to its mm -hmm. landscape. So what does that mean in really, really simple terms? Uh, in as much as I, like I said, I love that Tamara has graduated and she is going to into a career that she is really excited about. I want to see more of our Baltimore, um, our Bliss alumni being at a place where they are impacting uh, communities, uh, particularly in Baltimore. So impact can look like on a very, um, I, I say, 
on a, at a grassroots level, being leaders, continue to be leaders on their campuses for those who are, are in college to be leaders in their careers and to continue to be trailblazers. Um, we want to continue to actualize our mission of 100% of our students being accepted into the college or university of our choice. And, and so uh, when I shared this with a student recently, she said, so y'all remixed the mission? Uh, yeah, pretty much. So we did a little remix and that remix is not only are 100% of our students going to the college or university of their choice, but also um, at least 75% of them graduating from four year colleges and universities and having a real substantial or substantive impact on the communities that they serve. And those communities can be in um, the world of work, it can be on their campuses, it can be in their communities, but we just want to see more uh, Bliss alumni uh, leading Baltimore and beyond. So that, that would be what I would like in the next, to see in the next five years. So we'll have more of our students who are at a, at a place where they're poised to lead. So I'll turn it over to Carrie. What would you? Sure, well, I have two answers. One, from the development seat, I want to continue to spread the bliss uh, mission and knowledge of the school and into our community, because it just it when we educate these young women and send them to college and bring them back, whether it's in our community or in another city to lead it, people are just so excited and want to be on board with that and we want to make that opportunity possible. One quick success story I wanted to share was we have a, a woman who's on our board who runs um, a finance office and she hired one of our she's a, uh, one of our alums who's a senior at a local college for an internship last summer and then helped her get a full-time job at Morgan Stanley so we've got a young woman heading into finance in a really powerhouse way so I want I want more of our community to see that and to come alongside Bliss and offer things like internships and, and access um, the other thing I say is when in the school building, you know, we're sending someone to class who somehow has ended up in our office when she shouldn't be. She might complain and I always say, you know what, you can go ahead and not thank me from your speech when you graduate from college. So just, just write that down. And when you graduate saying, who, I do not want to thank Ms. Dickel because she did not help me. <laughs> so if I can rack up a few of those, I'll feel very successful. You sound like a mom of most of the kids in the school. So. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I think we all are. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, I, that, that's the yeah. kind of wise comment I would make to my kid. That's why I said that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, Christina, let's hear. Yeah, I, I think that for me, and, and again, you know, I've served in two capacities with the school, one as an upper school principal and now as a consultant. And when I look at Bliss, I really do see a a place that, um, to Siobhan's point, is contributing to the Baltimore educational landscape. Um, yeah. We are one of three public girls schools in a city that as I keep saying, um, and as I've referred to from my own life, um, is full of single sex schools. Um, but when you think about where we are as a nation and what um, some of the, the, the reckoning around equ equity in education, um, <laughs> here they are, right? The oh, reckoning <laughs> around equity in education um you know not enough people in the city know about the work that we're doing uh it is work that everyone is trying to figure out how to do and i think bliss is really examining uh what they can do on a much larger level than just one girl um and while the success stories often come out in these student by student stories we're doing something in the educational landscape that few others are doing um and so I would like to see in the next five years, you know, some some recognition on that uh, level, and have Bliss educators really be leading the conversation around equity for for girls and girls of color in the city. Amazing, you know, it's astonishing to me because I have a background as a discrimination lawyer, and then I started this women's group, and I live here, and I've never heard of you, and I'm thinking, how can there be something this fabulous, and I've never heard of it. So I'm grateful that. All three of you, I would have been happy if one of you even showed up, but that the three of you took time, you know, to be here uh, because more people need to know about what you're doing on an individual and on a large scale, both. So uh, I'm hoping we can help spread the word. So if you're watching this, make sure you share this. <laughs> we get everyone to know about it. Uh, but let's take a minute before we wrap up and talk about supporting you because I know that you are doing some really powerful work, but everybody needs support. 
So what, I mean, our donations, time, what are things that people can do if they have the means for time or money, or if maybe they're strapped, but they still are inspired? Can you give us a few items that people could tackle to help you? Sure. I'm going to just jump in and give a very quick summary of some some work that um, the school is doing that's really unique. And then I think Carrie and Siobhan will both have some more concrete ways to get people involved. But right now with the school, as we recover from COVID and continue to build in the second decade of the school, um, the school has launched the Whole Girl Wellness Initiative. Um, my company has been supporting them in that work um, structurally and strategically. And what that means is really making sure that in all elements of the school, from the class classroom, to extracurriculars, to materials, and to funding priorities, um, we are focusing on opportunities for students to build their, their positive self-identity through their voices, through having the competence and confidence to take academic and social risks, um, to be physically and mentally well, particularly now as we recover from COVID and bring students yeah. back into the building. And so what that looks like at the school level is um, really looking at the programming and opportunities for, for girls around mental health counseling, around um, partnering with organizations that support students with loss, um, around making sure that girls have exposure and opportunity to authentically take risks because that's how you build confidence, right? It's the um, failing forward notion and, and you don't know what you can't do um, if you haven't had the opportunity to try, right? So with that, I think Carrie and Siobhan would have some more concrete um, elements to talk about. But I say all of that because I think there will be folks in your audience with whom that really resonates as women in particular, imagining yes. that if in your school experience, people had been pushing you to take risks um, and exposing you to things that you didn't know about as pathways, um, that's a big element of this while we support the girls wholeness because we know they can't learn or absorb from any of those opportunities if they're not physically and mentally whole. It's just amazing because it's so much more than taking a math class. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what you're putting together is so important for, for the youth. Okay, go ahead, either one of you, jump in, please. Okay, Carrie, I'm going to do the um, the volunteer opportunities if you can take on the, uh, the philanthropic piece, okay? All right, so in terms of volunteer opportunities for with us, we have two types. One is what we call a done in a day. So this is for the person who I only have a day or maybe two hours to complete certain opportunities is one is definitely our She Speaks series. So She Speaks is just what it sounds like. We bring in women from uh, various walks of life to share their experiences with our students. Um, they present for 20 minutes and then the students have 20 to 25 minutes to ask uh, any questions that they may have about uh, the presenter's uh, life and leadership experience. Another, although it is this Thursday, we invite everyone here to save the date for next year. Uh, this Thursday, we're having our annual Cool Women with Hot Jobs. It is our version of a, no, that's really the name. So, <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> so it is, it uh, started as what we would consider a career day, and now it is a full day virtual conference for our students. So similar to the conferences we attend as professionals, they identify their area of interest, they look at the speakers, they sign themselves up for sessions, and then they have to do a reflection on the sessions uh, that where they participated. What's different from the conferences that many of us attend is that there is an embedded wellness session and uh, panels for both middle and high school students about the world beyond bliss in a way that is both age and developmentally appropriate. So we have those done in a day activities that people can do, you know, to just say, you know, I wanna get my feet wet, but I really don't have, you know, a lot of time to do a long-term commitment. Next year, we took a hiatus for this year, but really thinking about how uh, women can serve as mentors for uh, the full year. So we typically have done it with our 12th graders and we would assign them to a mentor for the duration of their 12th grade year. And this is a way that 12th graders can begin to build their professional um, their professional network. So, so often our students are very much connected to their families and maybe some community members, but this uh, woman in the community can really start to help them to broaden their network. So that is something that if um, uh, those who have the time to commit to a full year or more to a 12th grader, that is something that we would like for, for everyone to consider. And so Carrie, I'm going to turn it over to you. Can I ask one quick question though, Siobhan? 
Uh, yes. Is this something that the person has to be physically in Maryland in order to do? Like if somebody was watching this and they couldn't get into Baltimore, they were distanced or whatever, mm -hmm. can they do anything virtually or is it is it really necessary to be here? No, absolutely. So our Cool Women Hot Jobs uh, and our she speakers, they come from all over the country. So that has been one of the upsides from the pandemic. So we can, oh. more people can reach us and we can reach more people. So I'll say that. And the same for uh, when we retool the mentoring opportunity, uh, my thought is that that is something that can also be done in a virtual format. So the students have iPhones, they use them all the time. So <laughs> we're going to put those uh, iPhones to good use through FaceTime. So yes, is the short answer. Uh, right, wherever when people you, are. Mm -hmm. When you redo your next Cool Women with Hot Jobs, Please, you know, let us know in the group because we've got some really cool women with some really hot jobs in this organization. So if they're here or they're not here and there's a virtual way for them to support you, that'd be exciting. Okay, sounds good. Awesome. Thank you. So Karen, yeah, I'm turn it over to you. Yep, and I'll just round us out by saying uh, the story I mentioned earlier about internships. So that's always a possibility too. We want to put, get as many of our, our current students in, in into internships, but also thinking about connecting with our alums, particularly those in college. We wanna make sure, we know our girls have the skills, the smarts, everything, they just need the access. Um, and on, from the philanthropic side, we uh, have a, an Empower Breakfast every year. So that at that breakfast, that's our largest, that's our only fundraiser, and it's our largest event where we tell the Bliss story. So since COVID began, that has, uh, been in the virtual space. This year, it'll be coming up in October, we will have an event in person, but we will also have an opportunity to participate virtually. So that's something if you or your business want to be seen um, supporting the school, we have a lot of sponsorship levels available. So, so that's one way to get involved. Um, also, if you want to volunteer for any of these things, you can email empower. E M P O W E R at bliss, B L S Y W dot org, um, and let us just identify yourself. And of course, if you're moved to make a donation, you can do so through our website, bliss.org forward slash donate. Fantastic. So I am so grateful that I somehow was lucky enough to get all three of you in here today. Um, and I just want to thank you for what you're doing for women because, like I said, if you can help someone when they're young, the butterfly effect of that is remarkable. So bless your heart for all the hard work you're doing. And I would invite you please to let us know in the group about any opportunities, fundraising events or you know, time donations or you know, done in the day virtuals because we do have a lot of people who watch and have crazy careers or are in other areas, but I'd love to do that. And if you're watching this, please sp spread the word about this school because I don't know how I didn't know about it. So invite some people into the Facebook group and tag them on this or um, again in another week or so, we'll have it on the YouTube channel. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and start tagging some of your friends because the more people that hear about this school, the more volunteers we can get, the more donations we can get and the more powerhouse women we can have. And how great would it be if in the future, all your cool women with hot jobs were graduates of your school? That's the goal. That's, that, the goal. Yep. Right. That's exactly right. <laughs> so thank you all so much for being here. Really grateful to have it. And thank you for the impact you're making in Maryland as well. Thank you for Thanks having so me. Thanks so much, thank you. My pleasure. And we will see you all back here live next Tuesday with a very exciting author who is going to have, we're going to talk about her book and it'll be a really wild ride to hear about what she does to support families. So thank you all and have a fantastic week. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.